Pelvic floor exercises can increase the strength and coordination of the pelvic floor muscles, so they are better able to prevent leaking with increased intra-abdominal pressure, such as coughing, sneezing, laughing, and exercising. A stronger pelvic floor can help to keep the bladder under control, so that you are not rushing to the toilet too often and leaking as you rush to get there. Knowing what makes you leak or when it happens can help to target your exercises to be more effective at preventing or controlling the leaking. Pregnancy can cause leaking due to the increased weight on the pelvic floor, so it is wise to do pelvic floor exercises to manage this. After childbirth, it's important to do your pelvic floor exercises. Even if you've fully recovered after the birth of your baby and don't have any problems at your pelvic floor, or even if you've had a C-section. After a vaginal delivery, your muscles are likely to be weak and stretched, and they need to be exercised gently, lying down, to start with, and gradually challenged in harder positions such as sitting and standing. This takes months to work on, so it's important to persevere. You may have leaking in the early days and weeks after the birth, due to weakness of the pelvic floor, but this should improve with the exercises. If it is not, or you're not sure you're doing the exercise correctly, contact a women's health physiotherapist for assessment. Later in life, other factors may have an impact on the pelvic floor, such as at menopause, increasing body weight, doing heavy lifting around the house, or caring for toddlers and elderly relatives. So it is important to have good pelvic floor strength and control. Try to remember to exhale and lift and squeeze your pelvic floor as you lift heavy things. If you're experiencing leaking or a feeling of something coming down as you lift, try to avoid that weight until you've got better control. Losing excessive body weight can make a big difference to your pelvic floor symptoms too. Some women don't experience incontinence until they start becoming more active. So if you've not been exercising the pelvic floor regularly, you will need to start. If you are leaking while exercising, it is wiser to pull back on that type of exercise until you have better control of your pelvic floor. Alternative exercise options that may work for you would be swimming, cycling, brisk walking instead of running, for instance. You may need to reduce the weights you lift at the gym until you have better control, or reduce high-impact jumps until you can do so without leaking. If you're leaking with walking, start with short distances and build up gradually. Try to walk tall, with your lower tummy muscles gently engaged. Supportive underwear or support shorts, like EVB shorts, may help to reduce your leaking. If you're able to do your pelvic floor exercises well, standing up, you may be ready to try high impact exercises. But if you're leaking or feeling pressure in the vagina while doing these, you should consult a women's health physiotherapist. When running, it is not advisable to be trying to squeeze and lift your pelvic floor, as this is not how the muscle is supposed to function. It needs to be able to bounce with you as you run, so don't actively squeeze while you run. Let it support you naturally. Doing pelvic floor exercises regularly during your life can help to prevent urinary incontinence developing as you get older. If you leak with raised intra-abdominal pressure, such as coughing, sneezing, lifting or laughing, we call these your triggers. Understanding your triggers will help you anticipate and control your leaking. While doing one of your triggering activities, such as a cough or a sneeze, squeeze the pelvic floor muscles as soon as you feel the cough starting. Doing this regularly will gradually reduce the amount of leaking over time. This is known as the knack. A good way to remember is to squeeze before you sneeze. Keep a tension in your lower tummy when coughing or sneezing and try to stay upright rather than bending over. You can also use your pelvic floor muscles to control bladder urgency. For example, women often find putting a key in the hall door triggers bladder urgency, or when they hear running water such as filling the kettle or getting in the shower. You can actively squeeze your pelvic floor when you face these circumstances, and that will help to control that feeling of urgency. When the urgency starts, stand still, do a few low deep breaths and repeatedly squeeze the muscle. You can remember this as freeze, breathe and squeeze. Once you feel you have some control of the feelings of urgency, then calmly walk to the toilet. If you rush to the toilet with a strong sensation of urgency, you are more likely to have some dribbling on the way. Some women experience leaking after emptying their bladders. You can help this by taking your time on the toilet, sitting and leaning forwards, allowing the bladder to empty fully, and then do a set of pelvic floor exercises when you are finished 
which will help to close off the urethra and this can reduce your leaking afterwards. Using your pelvic floor in the right way with your daily activities can make a big difference to your symptoms. Eventually this will become second nature to you so you won't have to consciously think of it every time. So keep practicing.